What is going on in Japan at this point? The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom hype has reached a new apex in the land of the rising sun because on the Amazon bestsellers right now at this point, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is of course on bestsellers, the number one game. We all know that. It's been that way for more than two months now, I think at this point. Ever since pre-orders went live, it's pretty much shot up to the top of the charts. We know about that. But what's going on with the rest of the Nintendo Switch ecosystem? Well, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is carrying the nintendo switch on its back the knees might be a little bit weak here at this point with how much carrying tears of the kingdom is doing because on amazon japan i've never seen this before in the top 10 top 10 positions the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom has three out of the top 10 you have the nintendo switch game at number one you have the nintendo switch oled of the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom that special edition at number seven and you also have the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom with a spoon at number 10 but then if you look at everything else here at number two the nintendo switch oled the white model then at number four the nintendo switch oled the red and blue model then at number five the nintendo switch oled the splatoon 3 model now we know that splatoon 3 is big in japan so that isn't really too big of a surprise but the fact that it's back up into the top 10 at this point with the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom right around the corner is absolutely incredible and once again i follow these sales quite a bit guys i have not seen anything like this where we see four models of the nintendo switch in the top seven in the top seven, four models of the Nintendo Switch. That is a system that's going into its seventh year, okay? Seventh year. It's six plus years at this point. March 3rd, 2017, when the system was launched. So it's been six plus years, and we're seeing this system actually at the top of major regions. Now, once again, this is not a comparison when it comes to PS5. PS5 is number three on this list. It's doing incredible. It's doing great when it comes to the overall sales. Now, in Japan, there was some talk about how well it's doing or not, and people made some videos and stuff, and it's kind of evened out a bit more. Switch has been outselling once again, but that's not the point of this, because the Nintendo Switch is old at this point, but I've never seen a system this old do this well, but I think that, once again, it's because of Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, how incredible this game looks. No other game that's been released on the Switch in the post five plus years that the system's been on the market has been able to carry the Switch when it comes, when it comes to the console sales this well. I think that the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, without it, I don't know if it'd be doing anywhere near as well, but the hype and anticipation for this game has kept the Switch afloat in Japan when it comes to sales and people just being anticipating, getting ready, buying extra systems, finally saying, all right, after five, six years and over 20 something million units in Japan, I'll finally pick up a Nintendo Switch or buy one for my friend or whatever the case is, or multiple units, because it does lead to multiple units being bought. But this isn't just a multiple units thing. When you have multiple versions of the OLED out there, multiple special editions, even stuff that came out last year with Splatoon 3 and that OLED going back in, restocks are obviously good but you need games that can also carry it as well so splatoon smash brothers kirby mario kart all of these games have been doing a great job and even there's a residual effect of this because the legend of zelda breath of the wild by far the oldest game in the top 26 because that was actually number 26 on the list the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom once again legend of zelda breath of the wild zelda is finally carrying the nintendo switch in japan so that's good to hear also, I don't talk about this very often, but I found that interesting that people all of a sudden, mostly Twitter, wanted to make a big deal like, hey, Final Fantasy 16, it's number one on the Famitsu Most Wanted charts. That's great because obviously we need Final Fantasy. It'd be great for that to come back. But Final Fantasy is always popular in Japan. Like it's always been popular. It's always going to be up there on the charts and everything. But Famitsu, it's just a small number of readers who do vote on this. But Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is back. But the big thing here is that it's over a thousand votes. There is crazy amounts of hype for the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom and that really just shows that not just with the famitsu most one that's one thing but actually seeing it in the pre-orders and showing some type of sales resemblance is more important than anything now i talked about before with tears of the kingdom actually surpassing splatoon in the comg pre-orders in japan so all of this is all relating here guys when it comes down to it. when you see 
all of the Nintendo Switch systems up in the top seven here. When you see Tears of the Kingdom, multiple versions in the top 10. When you see Breath of the Wild jumping back in, that game is so old at this point, right? Over a half decade old. When you see that jumping in at number 26 on Amazon, this is all good things for the best sellers of the year. Now, if you go over to new releases, obviously, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is even doing some crazier things because in the top nine in the top nine you have tears of the kingdom at number one you have tears of the kingdom switch at number three you have tears of the kingdom with the spoon at number five you have tears of the kingdom with some like eShop cards or something else at number seven and then you also have tears of the kingdom with the spoon and also the pro controller at number nine so multiple various versions of tears of the kingdom or the system with something all in the top nine guys this game is going to be a massive launch we could see a launch as big or close to what we saw with Splatoon and the millions that sold right there. I think it was about 1.9 million or something like that in Japan at launch. So we could see something very similar to that or close to it, which would be crazy for The Legend of Zelda in Japan. We've never seen a launch that big, but it's looking like it could be just that. So yeah, Tears of the Kingdom is absolutely carrying the Nintendo Switch in Japan, which is definitely a good thing. It's good to see that Zelda, a storied franchise, so many years, decades at this point later, can still do wonders for Nintendo and that the quality is still there. So moving into the next thing here, I want to talk a little bit more about The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and quite possibly one of the coolest pictures I have ever seen and marketing for the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom on Twitter. There's been some great stuff, but this might just take the top spot, guys, because we all know we're very close to the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, but check out this marketing and check out this picture from Nintendo UK channel. It says, I know why I am here. It's something only I can do. Tears of the Kingdom. Seems pretty normal, right? But as you can see here, there's four separate pictures, four of them all put together, show Princess Zelda. But it's when you actually click on each picture, what becomes the really cool thing. Because when you click on it, bam, you have the different shots from the official trailer number three. Showing off a multitude of characters, but all put in like, I don't know if it's called a collage. I'm not exactly sure. You guys know what I'm talking about here. Like this thing to where it all kind of comes together to make Princess Zelda, which is awesome. I think that this is a phenomenal way of showing off the game. So as you can see here, you have the top left-hand corner princess zelda which is by the way one of my favorite shots when it comes to princess zelda that we've seen so far her and talking to link and talking with the master sword and holding it that type of way i mean that's just super cool just overall and then we have over here the top right hand corner you have link which is also another one of my favorite shots link flying on this huge stone bird that he has here you see the sky islands in the back it gives you a very good example of the awesomeness that's going to be happening in the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom whether you're waiting to play the game down or you're playing the game you're in the future it's just awesome and then of course you have the thunder there at the bottom gerudo is always one of my favorites in terms of lore and everything and to see that at the bottom is also really cool we're gonna move on to the next one right over here and we see this one, which I'm very excited to see exactly what this is all about. Because it shows Sidon, who's one of my favorite Zelda characters of all time, you know, and with the Zora race. Fighting with Link against the Construct here. So I think that this is going to be really cool. Will you be able to actually roll with Sidon normally? Is that just a mission? Is there certain missions that you just do with other champions and stuff? I think it's going to be really cool to see the context of this and exactly how it plays out in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And of course, you see the middle part with the Master Sword and Princess Zelda. She's not weak, man. Look at those arms, man. She's got some definition on those arms. Princess Zelda is not helpless at all. And of course, the Sage here, which is probably Zonai, right? We're probably all thinking that at the bottom, which is probably one of the most mysterious and best things about this story so far, is seeing exactly how they're going to be involved. And then, of course, last but not least, we have the right side, and does Princess Zelda become more of that? Is that her in the far future, her in the far past, using her light wave beam to blast through enemies of Ganon's? I mean, we just don't know. There is so much intrigue with this game there are so many theories that are out there i cannot wait to just delve in myself and just immerse myself in this game like i did with the legend of zelda breath of the wild back in 2017 but back then i didn't really think about the story too much back then because nintendo said some things but it wasn't really known it wasn't really as pronounced as this is here with the lore drops that nintendo gave us beforehand and now even at this point even after the final trailer back in 2017 when breath of the wild got its final trailer 
it wasn't really as pronounced with the story and everything. There were some parts, but this just seems a far more bigger and epic scale. Then, of course, you have Link again with another champion with the Rito. So this is great. This is fantastic marketing. This is fantastic pictures all put together to form this with Princess Zelda. It just looks really cool. Like, it just looks super, super cool when you actually put everything together and you go through and you look at the pictures. I love it overall i thought it was really cool so i felt like sharing it with you guys nintendo of uk does some great stuff i know their twitter account isn't as popular as the nintendo of america twitter account but man they do some really cool stuff so definitely check it out when you get the opportunity now i do want to talk about one more thing when it comes to my video yesterday i saw quite a bit of dislikes and people disagreeing and comments i did see quite a number of people upset when it comes to what i said about tears of the kingdom because the game is not out yet and because i said that it's ruined other open world games for me i meant and it was just personal opinion it wasn't necessarily something that all of you guys have to believe clearly a lot of you guys don't believe that as well and you guys can enjoy whatever games that you want to enjoy but i did want to explain myself just a little bit more because i do feel that i did an okay job of explaining in that video but i just felt that with tears of the kingdom coming out and what it does in the open world sense i see that they're really trying to innovate in the gameplay realm a lot of the open world games that i've played recently just feel a little bit uninspired to me they feel like they're not trying to innovate and they're all trying to be better versions of assassin's creed you know not that that isn't good not that you can't have fun not that that's not something that's great like the new horizon dlc i see people playing it it's absolutely fantastic it's rated well right people like it it's sold millions of copies when it comes to the base game the next Next big Grand Theft Auto that's probably gonna be really good right the next big open world game Assassin's Creed or whatever you want to play all those are gonna be great I'm just simply explaining my own personal viewpoint from someone who's been playing for a very long time and also just seeing that it is different various versions of Assassin's Creed and there really isn't that much of a push to really have an interactive open world console rpg that innovates in that way once again i talked about things when it comes to the pc realm like pc minecraft those have been incredible for innovation in that open world space but i'm not really seeing that from the big triple a console games now is that because they don't want to necessarily use the overhead to make all of those physics and mechanics Probably. They want to impress people with the look of the game. They want to impress people with the visual prowess. They want to make sure that people say, hey, look at how cool this game looks. We're going to really focus in on the details and the graphics and some of the other stuff when it comes to being able to climb anywhere that you want or being able to have hot cold systems that affect how you feel or being able to have realistic physics, you know, being able to chop down a tree or something like that. A lot of these developers don't want to worry about that. That creates a lot of work. And especially if you're trying to create a game that has incredible graphics, that's going to be really tough to do that's going to take a lot of time and these games are already taking forever to make so i completely understand why we don't get that at this point i'm simply just pointing it out from my own personal game playing perspective that's all it really was when it comes down to it i can look at a game right guys like i've been playing games for decades now at this point you know I can look at a game and say, you know what, for me, that's not really necessarily something that I want to play. I can look at a game and say, okay, for me, that's something that I absolutely want to play. I think that it's going to be a really good game based on the mechanics that I see. Because a lot of games, they're not all the same, but they follow the same rules and principles when it comes to certain stuff, especially open world games. So I can look to see if the movement is fluid. I can look to see what's going on. Now, ultimately, you still have to play that game to really understand the ins and outs. But I can kind of look at some of these games and be like, all right, you know, that's not necessarily for me, which a lot of you guys can also do too like a lot of you guys have told me hey you know what? i saw the trailer i saw you know your gameplay and it wasn't really for me but i'm glad that you're happy about the release and that's kind of how i feel when it comes to a lot of the japanese titles that i see like i can look at it and say okay final fantasy 16 that's absolutely going to be a game that i want to play maybe over a game like diablo 4 because i've seen the gameplay for diablo 4 you know and it's great it's really cool but it's definitely something that i've played before in the past and i'm looking at the gameplay right there and final fantasy 16 seems to be something that i would want to play a bit more that's been like like Diablo or even a bit more than something like the new Jedi game that's coming out the Jedi survivor game so for me it's a bit different in terms of how I'm evaluating and looking at things from a long time in terms of me playing open world games playing Japanese titles so I kind of specialize in that realm so that's why I feel pretty confident about the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and obviously if you look at the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and how big of an impact that game had I mean that's 
part of the reason why they're building on top of that they're building on top of that game but i also mentioned other games that i had a feeling about i've discussed this before with games like mass effect 2 i already knew that when i saw the footage of mass effect 2 when they started showing the trailers and everything i already knew based on how incredible the first game was that the next game was going to blow it out of the water i have that same feeling there was a lot of stuff that was reused when it comes to animations and when it comes to some of the things but what they showed with the story what they showed with the gameplay what they showed beforehand it's giving me that same vibe that same feeling they're taking a game that was already really good but really just the beginning the tech demo per se but it was so great for what it was some issues here and there there's some parallels between mass effect and uh tears of the kingdom for me but they're taking that base game and they're improving upon so many aspects of that and making it even bigger when it comes down to what they want to do tightening up gameplay adding new features and innovation so that's how i feel about the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom it feels like that mass effect 2 for me at least so once again wasn't trying to step on anybody's toes when it comes to what games that you like or what games you play or whatever the case is if you're excited for the next horizon or the burning shores dlc or for any of the other games assassin's creed or ghost of tsushima or whatever the case is be excited love it like it you know i'm all there for you man i'm all about the games when it comes down to it but i just wanted to explain myself a little bit more on that because i definitely think that i stepped on a few toes and i'm sorry if it came across uh that way with the video and everything like i'm not meaning to do that but it's just more of a discussion and that's cool that's the cool thing about video games that we can sit here we can agree disagree or uh, whatever the case is and we can still at the end of the day come together to talk about video games you know because it's just video games so what do you guys think about the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom carrying the nintendo switch on its back at this point and of course my clarification on what's going on here i love for you guys to let me know in the comment section and also check out my previous legend of zelda tears of the kingdom videos if you missed my open world ruined by tears of the kingdom check out that video plus other ones as well thank you so much for watching guys we'll catch you for the next video peace